it's interesting seeing these six minute things. So Quibi is interesting because they, they thought about pa pausing the launch to, to be post this epidemic. And at first I was like, but, but like the point of Quibi is like, you know, when you're, you know, waiting in line for something, when you're on your community, in traffic, yeah, that quick five minute bite. So, you know, and, and I think we were talking about this uh, in one of our marketing meetings the other day is it's like people want to get sucked into right now. They have so much time. You want to get into that new, that new season. You want to, now is the time that you're ready to tackle, you know, eight Tiger seasons. King. Tiger King or eight seasons of Game of Thrones because I never got around to it. You want to find that new show. I think I think part of the, they might be benefiting partly because overall screen time is up. But like if we're at home, are we going to want to watch on our phones? You know what I mean? Oh, oh God, what's going on? Where am I going? Oh. Dad? Yes, my son. I am Deuce, the Deer God. I'm so confused. Who am I? Derek. Your true name is Dercules. Dercules. Wait, what? Yes. You are Dercules, the god of the forest. <laughs> Season five. Hosted by your favorite podcast host, Big Bochy. You already know the deal, mother. What's up? I'm Nick Warner. This is my platinum hour. Okay, we're live. Um, hey, Slugs wow. and Brennan, say hi. Hey. What's going on, guys? How are you guys? I don't. They weren't out in LA with us when when we had met. Okay, got it. But um, dude, it, is it as bad in LA right now as it is in Boston? Because you guys are like some of the first ones to kind of get hit with the stick talk. Yeah, uh, I mean, in terms of, I was talking to my mom yesterday about it, in terms of cases uh, and numbers, it's not as bad. Um, but I just think as a state and, you know, Governor and, and Eric uh, Garcetti, the mayor of LA, I think they've just taken, and the Bay Area too, they've just taken a really proactive approach to it. Um, and just kind of taking it seriously just from the get-go and from, you know, just kind of looking at what New York has done and just kind of getting ahead of it. Um, so it's not, it's not, you know, it's not as bad, I guess, um, in terms of cases, but everyone's taking it pretty seriously here. Um, well, you guys got that. There's rad no traffic. <laughs> there's I no know. traffic. The air is the cleanest it's been in 20 years. <laughs> I, I can't imagine what the freeway looks like because we dude, I, so I, I'm in a new apartment right now. I, um, let's go I, the promotion. Yeah, I, I, I moved to, <laughs> I moved to uh, Playa. It's a, I, let me see if I can give you a little view of what I'm looking at right now. It's beautiful out today. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so I moved and I had already signed my lease. So I already had to move. Um, and then it all happened. And I was like, do I hire movers or do I just do this myself? And I was just thinking, I was talking to my mom about it. She's like, oh, do I want like five random people touching all my stuff? When was this? Like two weeks ago? I signed the lease. Uh, yeah, I signed the lease like March 15th. So it was like just when it was getting really serious here. It was like it was right before St. Patty's Day and everything. Um, that was right when Tom Hanks caught it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like when it really all, it really all happened. And I think, I think actually I just started work. My first work from home day was like March 13th, that Friday. Our, it wasn't like not at all. Everyone was working from home yet, but my boss was like, don't, we don't want anyone in the marketing team coming in. Don't come in if you don't have to. I think only IT came in the next day. Um, and then uh, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to move myself. <laughs> and I have like a Ford Focus with a hatchback. So I just like, I would work. <laughs> I would work. I, I'd get up in the morning. I'd do a load, come back. I'd work for the day. And then at like six o'clock when there should be horrible traffic, I would go do another load to my other apartment. 405 was just completely empty. It was the weirdest thing to see on like a Monday, Tuesday, one every day of the week, 6 p.m. when it should have taken me 45 minutes to an hour to get from Brentwood to Playa and it was taking me 12 minutes. Dude, it, it's like every one of your favorite apocalyptic movies coming true, that like signature shot mm -hmm. of just the highway empty. Yep. I did a, I did a bike ride. Uh, I've been doing a lot of bike rides because just it's like I'm taking advantage of the roads that I normally can't, can't go on uh, with one of my buddies. We went we went South Bay to like Manhattan Beach Redondo and we got to Manhattan and it was just like, it's like 10 a.m. on a Saturday when it should just be bustling and everyone going out to breakfast and it was just like no man's land. It was, it was eerie. Now, where are you situationally uh, 
compared to Culver right now? Like, are you farther now? Or? Uh, probably Culver's kind of like in the middle between Brentwood and um, uh, Playa. I'm, I'm like t- 10 minutes from Culver. Yeah. Okay. And where did yeah. you live beforehand? Brentwood, which is kind of up, up tucked away by like Westwood, UCLA area. Okay. A word. Yeah. Kind of like, uh, yeah. Close well, dude, Monica, yeah. Dude, you guys got that rad governor who like took action. I know. Governor, uh, good old Gavin Newsom. He's just like the, the surfer governor who's like, yeah, I mean, it's like, so they, handled, man. <laughs> they just, they just, uh, took it pretty seriously where they, they told people, cause I guess the peak for us is supposed to be next week. It's in terms of cases. So they did come out and say, uh, if you don't have to go, uh, you don't have to go out for groceries and like, please stay in this weekend. So they're kind of being a little more proactive and telling people that this weekend, even though they've been telling people that for a while. Um, but I know they took it pretty, they, they got real serious. I think it was two or three weeks ago after they already did the stay at home. And then there was that one weekend and I didn't, I wasn't at the beaches, but apparently like, cause the beaches and the trails and parks were still open. Some of my buddies said it looked like the first week in the summer because everyone was just cooped up all week working from home and kind of listening. And then it's the weekend. So I think everyone thought, oh, I'm going to be the only person to go to the beach or I'm going to be the only person to take a hike. So everyone did it and it was just like packed. So then then, then they closed all na- all parks, all national parks, all hiking trails, uh, all beaches. Like I can't even walk on the beach right now. They'll give, they're giving I, I, people I even, citations. I can't even imagine what Venice Beach is like right now. It's like so uh, I think it's just completely spot. dead. They're, they're giving – they're a couple of people have tried to like sneak on and surf and they're getting, they're getting uh, huge fines for surfing. <laughs> Plugs and Brendan, Venice beach is like the, uh, it's like the classic tourist area beach of LA where there's like Schwarzenegger's muscle beach and yeah. like all these dudes on long boards with long hair. Mm. It's just all dead right now. I'm sure I haven't been down there, but yeah. So what, I mean, you're like in one position. I mean, so in terms of what you're doing with streaming right now, like, is it just going crazy? Or is your, are your days longer? Because everybody <laughs> is watching new shows. Everybody. Yeah. On TV. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's interesting. I mean, we've had, you know, a lot of calls about it. And we were talking about it yesterday on a call too, that, I mean, I feel grateful and really lucky that in a way we, this epidemic, this global pandemic has thrived. Af- yeah, I mean, it's affected the economy so badly and so many businesses. Uh, and, and in a way, we're one. Of, and I was in the theatrical business before and made the switch a year ago. Um, uh, in a way, like we're protected from it, you know? Uh, so, you know, I mean, you know. Well, you're Zoom, benefiting from it. Exactly. That's what I mean. And they're going to be the few things of what we're on right now. You know, Zoom is doing really well. People that create medical supplies, you know, there, there's going to be certain industries that do thrive from it uh, for them. The select few, most, most are not. Um, but yeah, the days I, I, I will say like, you know, I've been busier. The days have been not as long. I think we've done a really good job of, I think we talk a lot about working from home. You know, my desk is right next to my bed. So it's easy to just get wrapped up and be working all the time and not have that, that line between when you walk into the office and then when you walk out and get in your car and you're like, my day is done. I can answer a couple more emails. So I've been really careful to do that because I could literally, there's probably enough work for me to do to work all the time. And then on top of that, just with our mental states, just like being cooped up in your house that I'm just like trying to make sure I have that balance and that I am, you know, like like going for runs and getting out and stuff. You can walk outside though, right? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 And it's, I feel like it's not like I've heard New York is like, people don't even go out where like people, people are still, there's still a lot of people going for walks and stuff here and stuff. So I am, but, but, but to answer your question, yeah, it's, it's, it's gotten crazier. Uh, It's just been everyone. I mean, across all, all of entertainment, it's just been a lot of shifting and stuff. So for us, it was just kind of shifting our marketing campaigns, changing a, a lot of the shows that were already slated to go. We'll still go. I've been working on the show High Town, which uh, takes place in Cape Cod. Sweet. Yeah, it's about a it's about a murder on in Provincetown, kind of set uh, with the backdrop of the opioid epidemic. Um, so that one, they've been working on that one. But in general, like when is yeah, that we, slated to release? Uh, May seventeenth. Sweet. When is uh, up on that? Uh, I've been working on that one since like December. Oh, word. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's a really cool one. I'll, uh, I'll show you the trailer and the uh, poster, which I really, which I worked on, which I love. Now you go down um, the vineyard, right? What? You're in, you and your family go down the vineyard? Falmouth, yeah, Falmouth. Falmouth. 
what's all specifically so like um, dude i mean yeah. as you as you know people don't know this about the cape but you can get to falmouth from boston in like 80 minutes mm -hmm. and then it takes like three hours to get to province <laughs> <laughs> um but but yes so the days have been longer uh a bit it's just been like a lot more and it's just been a lot of shifting so like we you know we've had we have these meetings every day just kind of shifting plans and figuring out ways to uh you know mount our digital and social campaigns um i think just being really aware of 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 everything as simple as the copy and kind of what we're saying you know you don't want to take advantage or have marketing messaging that's like kind of like like the, 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 the that was one know, of my questions like how do you navigate the line of being like a sensitive exactly ex exactly and i think like for us and i think i've watched a lot of brands even like hulu and netflix and everyone like you don't outright say stuff about the epidemic or stuff you, you like it's, it's more so been about like having have a lot of extra time at home binge these watch these you know uh you know virtual viewing party with your friend like just extra time on your hands and like, like i think this is not the time it's not the kind of thing and like there's lots of you can have a lot of fun and get really witty with messaging and stuff with other things, but this is not the time to make jokes about, you know, medicine, vaccine, you know, f f anything around Corona. Like, it's just like not the time for, from a larger brand perspective to kind of say things like that. So we've been really cognizant of that and just being careful with that. Uh, but yeah, just a lot of shifting our marketing strategies and kind of just figuring out, obviously, we're doing well. All the streamers are doing well. I think streaming is up like 85% uh wow well, well the I whole industry the, i uh yeah f across the uh, neil that, that was what nielsen said across the week for like the last week of march i think wow um yeah it was like i think like americans uh watched 156 billion hours of tv the last week of march compared to the last week of february oh uh, which was like God. 115 billion hours of tv yeah it's crazy so um yeah it's just been a lot of shifting now, strategies and then just 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 kind of uh we started running a deal which was doing really good, which is doing well as well uh which is uh six months for 25 dollars. so that's been good just you know a lot of engagement on the app people obviously people are just watching more tv so we're just trying to you know just trying to from a brand perspective and just trying to push it more and we're not one of the big dogs as i've talked as i talked to you last time about it you know we're not a netflix and a hulu we do have a very uh, niche audience that we target with the programming that we have on our app being, you know, for the most Power, part, older, yeah. And being older women, you know, I, I just finished Outlander campaign, uh, which launched in February, uh, which we had to go. Uh, it went really well. It was, it was, it was, it was really well. We just had, I think it was episode seven or eight was the, uh, most watched episode of Outlander ever. So that was, that was, that was a good, good win to get. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just been a lot of a lot of moving fast. And then I think on top of that, looking to the future for us, it's been a lot of the shows that I'm on now are uh, we're in pre-production and we're supposed to, uh, supposed to start going into production. Uh, and I think I explained the process to you last time where we kind of come up with concepts for uh, what the poster and key art will yeah. look like and what we're going to shoot and then we fly out to production. And, and so, you know, I, I did that for one of our shows in February and then we were getting ready to do a bunch of others and then everything got put on pause. Well, so well slugs, kind of been like, sorry to cut you off slugs. and yeah. Brennan, What, what Nick's talking about is on the marketing end before the, the show actually goes into production and everyone's on set, the marketing team will have an idea like, okay, we got to go shoot out to set and we know that this is what we want our marketing material to look like. So we're going to set up some photo shoots and some video shoots mm -hmm. because we know this is what the tra we want the trailer to look like the, the billboard. Not really, not really the trailer. Duh. It's more so it's more so the key art. So the main poster and then like Print. gallery. So gallery is like those really nice shots you have with like backgrounds that are, that will be used in publicity and in magazines and stuff like that. So we essentially dig in and read the scripts and then get a, feel for the tone and the style um, and kind of create our own uh, marketing decks kind of explaining you know how we want to position the show because there's so many different angles you can go into and then there are these like awesome amazing sketch artists at these creative agencies that we work with and they literally will sketch you know the two leads with different ideas and then you lock it in and you fly out there and you get everything you need so all of these got put on pause because all of our shows that were about to go into production for this year uh, got put on pause so right now I think for us, it's a lot of like, 
there's just so much unknown in general in the industry of when everything's going to go back to normal. So it's for us now it's, we're, you know, my team, we're playing the let's get ahead. Cause you know, say the, we have no idea, say like, I'm just, you know, it's probably not, you say like all of a sudden May 15th, we're all back at work and then productions just start going into, I don't think it'll be like this, but productions just start going and we have to be ready to just like go knock stuff out and go fly out there and do stuff. So for us, it's like, we want to be fully prepared to hit the ground running as quickly as we can. Yeah. Uh, and so we're just getting all our ducks in a row and just getting, getting kind of ahead and on top of every single one of our shows, even though there's just so much unknown dating wise of when each show will go back into production. So that's kind of so the to, game we've been playing. So to clarify all the shows that you guys were shooting at stars, you guys could have been halfway through a season are just totally, no one's on set anymore. We yeah. have to stop. I mean, everything's shut down. I don't like a single show is shooting right now. Oh, mm-hmm. I think the only show I saw with that was, I saw the article that the crown, the crown for Netflix had like one week left of shooting. And I think they pushed through as the epidemic was getting bad, but yeah, our shows, we had sh- our, our shows that were in the middle of shooting stopped. Shooting. Dude, I, I can't power, even imagine. The power spinoff stopped shooting. Uh, yeah. So, I can't even imagine like all the below the line people on set, like how no, much man, they're it's... out of work, dude. Mm-hmm. I saw Netflix set up a fund, like a hundred million dollar fund for people like that. And I know, uh, I'm not sure whatever all the stances everyone take everyone took. I know a lot of people, a lot of the companies and networks were trying to continue to pay them for at least two weeks. But I mean, you can't, you know, it's 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 crazy the times we're in, and there's only so much you can do to help. But if you continue to pay all these people through, you know, these months, and now it's going to go on being months that we're not in production, like. There's just the, there was no money budgeted for all of that. So I know then your business really, will shrivel up. Like your business will shrivel up. The you know the budgets will completely balloon. Um, LA is so such crazy. a big economy. It's like mm-hmm. it's it's just it's it's. I mean, I, I you keep seeing so many articles like, like again and again that like the industry is never going to be the same after this. So we'll see. I was. I mean, I I I, I keep thinking about like when productions do go back into you know when they do start up again what does that look like i just saw an article bob Iger, former ceo of disney talking about floating the idea of like when disneyland gets back up and running every person and like in addition to security every person taking temperature tests to Uh. see if you're sick which then if you really think about it doesn't even fully catch everyone because this virus is so scary that young people like you and I sometimes don't show any symptoms or won't show symptoms for like five to seven days, but we actually have it so that that's even faulty. But think about that. Like everyone taking a temperature check. That's like that scene in I am legend. that keep thinking of when Wilson is trying to escape and they're scanning everyone's eyes. You know what I mean? It's like that. And then I, and then I also just start thinking like, what does production look like? Does all 150 people on set get tested for Corona? And then you have a fully closed set and all those people are, corona free and then they have to stay in isolation for the rest of this you know what i mean like if this is going to come in waves and what that, that they're already uh they're talking about that for baseball they're looking ways to get baseball up and running by may uh and they were looking at putting at having the game having seven inning games uh at the spring training facilities in Arizona and then all the players just go directly back to their hotels and stay in isolation and they play in empty stadiums well Right now, there's such an opportunity for entertainment. Yeah. Because everybody wants it and everybody needs it. Yeah. And I mean, like, I get what baseball's doing, but it's just like, it's still like. It's going to change. It's just the world's changed, dude. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's nuts. Um, you've, seen, you've seen the pivot to the live concerts, which have been doing well, which are cool. You know, just cutting. I think I didn't want, there was a country music one this week and the one that John, uh, the one that Elton John hosted, like that's, you know, that's going to, there might be a, I mean, I don't know. We'll see how long this goes. Like if there, we're not in a war show season, but like, is there a world where everyone's sitting at home and then they cut to them if they win an award and then they give a speech <laughs> and I no know. one's present anywhere. <laughs> Well, as a marketer, I mean, you, we kind of went over this last time too, but like, I'm kind of the same way, like you kind of feed on chaos. So I know it's really morbid, but were you excited when you're like, okay, my industry is shifting completely. I got to adapt. I got to go. I wasn't excited. <laughs> I mean, no, this is, it's unprecedented times and it's, it's you know what I'm saying though? No, I know what you mean. I think, I think, I think what excites me about my job is that entertainment in general and marketing are always consistently changing 
day by day. And I think I, I talked about this last time with you that I pride myself on really being on top of all the trends, you know, across everything from food to fashion, to music, to culture. Uh, and oh, then someone, obviously someone's clicking what's going on right, right now. My bad. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it better? That's better. Yeah. Um, to, uh, you know, just being on top of all that stuff. But, but I mean, I wasn't excited when all this happened. I think, uh, you know, it's a, it's a shift and we've had to change everything really quickly and adjust. Um, and I'd rather this not going on, but it are, you know, our business is benefiting from it. Um, so, so there is that side of it, but of, of course I'm, I'm not excited and I'm not excited whatsoever. And I also do like, you know, work from home is, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to wake up and cook breakfast and be able to work from here. But like, I still, and like the, I still keep seeing more and more articles too about like America and the world, people are realizing now more you can get done at home and that work from home is going to be a more viable thing moving forward. I still love the person to person yeah, contact so in person things. And especially with what I do, which I always try to explain to people like with marketing and stuff is like, it's a lot of looking at assets, trailers, posters with my team. Luckily my team's small, my immediate, like my originals marketing team, there's just three of us. So like, I still thrive and love the three of us watching something together. You see how each other react to it and our human behaviors. Uh, you know, we've had kickoff calls with showrunners and producers where we normally would be in the room and meeting them. And there's just that, that, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just a better feeling when you get to have a, an in-person meeting and meet them and be like, yeah, we're going to work on your show. We're so excited to work on your show. Whereas like, I've had a couple now and it's just like over the phone and it's just, or zoom calls. I know. It's, just still, it's just not the same, you know? So like, I, I, I hear, I hear all some of these articles and what people are saying. And like, there's the memes that are a joke too. Like now you realize that every meeting could just be a call. But I still think marketing and creative and a lot of entertainment, just like the shaking the hands, which now we're probably not going to be allowed to do for for years, <laughs> and all of that, it just it just gives me a better feeling. And I so I and I miss I not thought never I miss going into the office. Yeah, I'm dude, missing, I I'm missing my coworkers. There's a I'm listening to a really great podcast right now. It's called The Producers Guide by Todd Garner, mm-hmm. and every so he interviews a ton of producers and what he said every single producer has the same thing they're like dude everybody loves being on set and talking to people and Mm -hmm. so it must be such a mental shift for a lot of these guys who are like or in gals who are producing tv Mm and just like you know there's a lot of anxious people in your industry so i'm sure that everyone's itching you know Mm -hmm. yeah I, i keep thinking like the first day we're back allowed we're back allowed back at work is gonna be like the first day of school <laughs> like everyone's gonna and like yeah what's up I, I bro miss it. yeah oh, how, like i mean think it like i haven't seen my coworkers in months in in over a month now and it's we it's just like you know but we i i, I will say i'm really and our our you know cmo was telling us yesterday like really impressed with how we've adjusted and how you know workflows and stuff you know the first couple of weeks were definitely difficult i think it was harder for our um creative agencies to, to, uh, cause they're, you know, talk about collaboration. Like what we do, we have found a way to pivot. What our creative agencies do is like, un- it's unprecedented, like the collaboration that they have with each other, where I'm talking like, you know, we give them a TV show, movie, what have you, like they have, you know, editors breaking it down. Then they have, they're called producers that are like the one in contact with us about like what what we want the trailer to look like they've got a graphics team working on another thing they've got a music team working on music polls and like have all those people in one building working together and on top of that they have these giant files and security on top of that that you know to have all that and then to pivot to work from home which they've all done really i've just been so impressed they've done really efficiently really really quickly uh, and they've kept the security top notch and still still up. But you know, just for them to pivot over into that, you know, it's it's been tough. It's just been, you know, it's been it's been an adjustment, man. <laughs> sure. Hey, I'm I'm gonna let uh Brennan Slugs ask a question, but real yeah. quick, dude, one person's life who has not changed in the slightest are film editors at all. Yeah. 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 No, it, it, you're right. Film, it, they haven't, but, but um, what has changed from what I understand too, because like we, we've been in contact with a bunch of uh, post teams. It's like, even if you have a film editor, or other, there's other people in the room overseeing them and stuff. So, you know, all that now is having to switch to being, to, to be remote. And then like, well, they were probably pumped about the quarantine. 
Like, yeah. oh, I, don't, I don't have to talk to anyone today. Okay, and, and then, and then your simple, like, I mean, it, it's even the small things that just add to time. Your, your download and upload speeds are just, it's just longer. And you've got all of America right now on Wi-Fi. I'm surprised. Cause I remember reading in China, I heard it crashed or something cause everyone was shut down. So you've got everyone in America, you know, on, on, you know, our Wi-Fi now making it a little slower. So there's small things like that with download and upload speeds of just these giant files. Um, but yeah, I think we, we've, we've found ways to adjust as, as quickly as we could um, for my team specifically, I'd say. A lot of hey. Google Docs. Oh yeah, a lot of Zoom. Hey, uh, who, wants to, who wants to rip one first, B or Slugs? I can. Oh, sl Slugs, you got one? Yeah, I do. Okay, Slugs. Um, I, was, I was wondering if you have, I mean, like, right now it doesn't look, we don't know when this pandemic stuff is going to end, but have you started thinking about a post-pandemic marketing strategy? Because once it's over, like, I would assume that people might not be on their screens as much and stuff, but have you thought about how you're going to um, keep all the customers that you guys have acquired? gained during this pandemic slugs yeah. that's a great question that is a great question i don't even know if i have an answer for that <laughs> uh no it's a really it's that is a really great um question because i think uh like what you're saying too and like what people just keep saying the news and, and in general i think after this is over i mean some people talk about people have a fear of going out but i think the most population Everyone's just going to want to go out. They're going to want to spend money. They're going to want to go to concerts. They're going to want to go get to restaurants. Drunk. Yeah, they're going to want to do the things that they weren't allowed to do. They're going to want to see their friends. So I, I, I do think that, that we're going to see a serious downturn in screen time overall. I don't know if we, we've like, I've thought deeply about them, you know, because because the day to day has been so crazy. So I haven't thought about a specific marketing campaign or strategies of ways to keep our uh, customers. But I think that you know we the deal that we have going now we've gotten a lot of people in on this six month thing so we do have people for a while so i i think i think it'll i think it'll come down more so to our content uh and and our content will want to get people to stay or not um but from a marketing perspective uh yeah <laughs> that's tough <laughs> Who knows? I, I, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm still thinking, I think, uh, I mean, the content comes first and our, you know, content is king. So if, if we do have the right shows, uh, to make them want to stay, uh, then I think that that would be great. But, um, yeah, I think, I think, I think we're, I think every, every asset, every marketing asset and, you know, the campaigns that we work on post this epidemic, um, that thought will be, ingrained into it and, and we'll always be thinking about it and thinking about you know now people are going to be you know the screen time is going to be down uh now we've got quibi remember i talked to you about i mentioned yeah. Quibi last time and you hadn't heard of it and now it just <laughs> that, was, that was in the right? fall and it just launched yesterday i know i was going to bring that up to you as well uh well, brendan, where, brendan and you were looking into quibi what were you seeing on it well i just saw the, the launch on monday and yeah Interesting. They have like a new version of punks. Um, I, I know they hired a lot. I watched it. Actors. Yeah. How was the new punked? It, it was good. It was. Good. It's just. It's weird how I guess punked was never that long when it was on MTV either. It's interesting seeing these six minute things. So Quibi's interesting because they they thought about pa pausing the launch to, to be post this epidemic. At first, I was like, but but like the point of Quibi is like you know. When you're, you know, waiting in line for something, when you're on your commute, in traffic, yeah, that quick five minute bite. So, you know, and, and I think we were talking about this uh, in one of our marketing meetings the other day is it's like people want to get sucked into right now. They have so much time. You want to get into that new, that new season. You want to, now is the time that you're ready to tackle, you know, eight Tiger seasons. King. Tiger King or eight seasons of Game of Thrones because I never got around to it. You want to find that new show. I think I think part of that they might be benefiting partly because overall screen time is up. But like if we're at home, are we gonna want to watch on our phones? You know what I mean? That's a fact. I mean, for me, the thing for me, which why I watch on it is because like sometimes I'm like, I want to be in bed by a certain time or like I don't want to start an hour show and I couldn't fall asleep on Monday. So I, I just went on Quibi and watched like 12 minutes of punked and then i went to sleep 
But well, dude, uh, that's what we're doing with the podcast. I'm I'm cutting down on episode time. I probably should have even told you this. I'm I'm trying for the next like three weeks to just have them like 30 to 40 minutes. All right, I'll see you later. No, yeah, bro. <laughs> Peace. Um, but Wait. no, so the other interesting thing about Quibi is they uh so they they pivoted and they did I think they were gonna do 30 days free, so now it's a 90 day free trial. So I'm on a 90 day free trial and it's like you're a scumbag a, dude it's a it's a 15 second <laughs> ad you get you get like a 15 second ad for um every like six or seven minutes of footage so it's not that bad it's not that Who's bad advertising on, on the app i'm trying to remember what i saw but i do know this too they are already which i don't know if people could pull out of they'd already sold out their entire ad revenue for the entire first year so there is that and they said recently in an interview they have enough content to last them through thanksgiving oh they're pumped so, so they at least have that, but it's, it's an interesting, I will say go on it and like mess around with the interface. It's, it's the, the actual, like, uh, when you flip your screen like this, it's, a, it's seamless. It's pretty amazing, man. It's I'm impressed. And just like swiping and looking at all the shows, I'm really impressed with the actual product design and stuff, but, but yeah, it's an interesting time to launch. Cause it's like, do people want to watch stuff on their phone now? And like, I think, I think the day they launched, they were the second most downloaded app, which is great behind TikTok. But it's like, those are the people that they want. They want the TikTok people. They want the 18 to 25 yeah, year old yeah, yeah. millennials. You know, people like my mom aren't going to be binging Quibi. <laughs> I know. People like your mom are, are binging the O network. Yeah. My mom's watching. Yeah. My mom's a, <laughs> watching Outlander. <laughs> hey, uh, B, you want to give your Haymaker question? Oh, yeah. I just actually, I wanted to ask you about Tiger King. And- What's your take on it? And do you think any streaming platforms will be able to replicate the viral nature of it? Or do you think its popularity is based on the, like the insane characters? Yeah. So uh, I, I think, of course, content, you know, the content comes first. And, you know, Netflix has done this. I mean, if you look at, if you look at past history, they've had like, one to two viral docs a year. They're really good at finding those, those just crazy stories, you know, making a murder, uh, uh, wild, wild country. They find those crazy docs that just like suck people in. Um, I think it was kind of a perfect storm. I think Tiger King would still be kind of popular right now, but if it wasn't for every single person being home, you know, it, they kind of just struck gold with, they, I think they had both that and Ozark season three, which I already watched, which is amazing by the way. Uh, launched kind of within a week of each other. When did and Mickey it, and Murderer launch? Was it at an making, opportune making time? A, making a Murderer, yeah. They, they're, they're really smart about their release dates. I remember this. The first season of Making a Murderer launched right before Christmas. So everyone was home on winter break. I think it was like December 20th or something. And it was kind of like a family story. Exactly. And like everyone just binged it, you know, over the that week that they have off. And it was, I just remember, I think it was like 2015 or 16. Uh, so yeah, that was a, that was, that was a good time too, but so I'll, I'll, I'll say this tiger King. I think it is like, you know, they, they struck gold, you know, lightning only strikes once. I mean, there, I'm sure there's going to be more docs like that. Uh, there's always a couple docs every year that pop. I watched McMillions, which was great, which was another one that was just like, you get these crazy, insane stories with these, you know, caricatures and these like, just like, you don't even believe it's real and they kind of just blow up um so i think it is like lightning in a bottle um but i do think which people have talked with which art mark mcgene has talked about and stuff in general is you need to be careful of how you present those people in the in that certain area so like this show even making murder i think was midwest right but, I think it was but minnesota this, yeah it's minnesota so but this show specifically it's like creating these stereotypes that people on the west and east coast and, and general america people that live in you know urban environments in the cities yeah they don't want to make of, sure everyone in minnesota seems like they're stupid exactly people, in, like, like, this is oklahoma florida. oklahoma your oklahoma florida stereotypes so i think you just need to be careful of that when presenting the marketing materials joe your, exotic yeah the social stuff in general like you know, you just need to be careful of, of the, you know, stereotyping and, and putting people in a bucket of like the Florida stereotypes, the Texas, the Oklahoma, and those kinds of things. So I think you just need to be careful with those kinds of like when you have shows like that and you're working on the marketing campaigns. Um, now, is Stars working on any docuseries right now? We are working on some docuseries. Some fire stuff? Yeah, some good stuff. 
Let's go. Hey, we'll are, see. We'll, you'll see it down the road. <laughs> how did how did Dublin Murders fare for you? Were you excited good. about it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Dublin Murders, Dublin Murders did well. Um, that was a fun one to work on. Season two. Uh, potentially, we'll see. Um, no, I, don't I know. You can't say too much. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about a season two uh, at this, uh, you know, currently right now. But um, no, that was a really fun one to work on. We were happy with how it performed. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a really. Did you ever watch it? It was a good show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I I watched episode one through four, and I thought the cinematography like was incredible. Mm-hmm. We yeah. had talked about it. I was like, I remember seeing like you the guys shots using that we used in the trailer. Yeah. Well, well, no, we were talking about like the the green color palette. It mm-hmm. just, I never look at shows the same now. Every time, you know, there's like an oversaturated green color palette and someone's cinematography, you're like, okay, mm-hmm. there's about to be some gruesome murder here. Or some kids. Yeah, 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 that was a fun one. That was good. Um, I also yeah. heard, um, mm-hmm. it, it was interesting. The, the same podcast I was listening to the other day, one of the executive producers, I forget the, the name of the guy who he was interviewing was a, he was an EP on uncle drew and he, and he had a lot of the same stories you had. Was about it, it. He was, like, was, it Marty, really? was it Marty Bowen? I'll tell you right now. He was, uh, and he was saying a lot of this. What's the, what's the podcast? It's called the producer's God. It's great. It's by Todd Garner, who was used to be an exec at a uh, Disney. Had it. Marty Bowen. Yeah. It was Marty Bone. I, yeah, I, met, I met Marty on set when I flew out there. He's great. He works for uh, Temple Hill. He was just saying it's like insanely hard to get the rights from Pepsi and like manage all yep. the brands. And mm-hmm. it, there were a lot of brands on that one. It was it was uh, it was a not an easy one. Uh, what's it called? The Producer's Guide. Yeah, it's really good. The Producer's Guide. Shout out to Todd Garner. It's a great show. Hey, um, again, I. Uh, we can be on Zoom for like 500 minutes if you want. I was, I'd still have to talk to you over this, but I'm kind of testing out the podcast to see if running it shorter, people will consume it more. Mm-hmm. Um, Slugs and B, any, any final haymakers? No, nah, man. I got a lot out. Yeah, N- Nikki, Bu- Nikki Buckets, you came through with that marketing value today, man. <laughs> I'm glad, man. I'm glad. Um, yeah. So, so what is my final question is the fact that all these productions are halted are has anybody like internally at your company been like they're at what point you might not have any content left to release you're just going to release old content or um yeah so we're that that's definitely a, that's definitely something that we're looking into um i think uh we have a certain amount of shows that are already shot and stuff so it's a lot of uh readjusting the release schedule you know just moving things around more gradually i think i think everyone i think everyone besides which i think they've come out and said publicly netflix is like they have so much content already in the bag like they'll be fine for a couple more months and stuff and they'll probably just space their stuff out a little bit more but i think in general i mean the market's already always so oversaturated there's always like 10 shows dropping every weekend or something 20 you know just so many I think we will see uh, some kind of smaller gap. I don't know if people of TV or content, I don't know if people will notice it as much though, because in general, people will be like, huh, there's not 100 shows dropping this month. <laughs> so I don't think people will notice it or be as cognizant. But if this continues to go on for a couple months, then, then yeah, there will be a gap in general. I think for us, it's just about adjusting the release schedule. And we, we do have, which we talk about a lot too, a lot of our subscriptions and what people stay on our app and the viewership, it's not always, we have a really good movie catalog and good deal set in place. Like we just had exclusively once upon a time in Hollywood, just exclusively premiered on, on the stars app. Uh, we get all the Sony movies. So we have an output deal with them. I uh, want that scene when he's at the Manson ranch, Ugh, Brad Pitt and everyone's staring. So good. So good. Oh man. Um, so we have a really good movie catalog, which we do well with as well. Um, in terms of originals too, we're, we're on the smaller side, you know, we're, I think we do like 10 to 12 originals a year, which is just like smaller than we're, and we're just more targeted where, you know, kind of, we have HBO's even kicked it up. I think we're Showtime probably does a couple more than us, but it's, it's, it's very much of the 
a, a promise of our brand and, and that these are going to be premium shows for a specific audience more so. And then we also have all these great movies. Yeah, I honestly, like after we get off, go, go jump on stars and look at the movies we have. And like, if you look at the, the actual movies we have compared to like our movie catalog compared to HBO, Showtime and Netflix, it's, it's, it's pretty good and pretty impressive. I've always impressed like from classics to your good old rom-coms and a lot of Tarantino movies right now that we're pushing. Um, but um, yeah, I think it's, I think, it's, I mean, to answer your question, I think, I think for us, it's a lot of uh, moving, moving shows around and moving the schedule. Yeah. Just to make sure that there's always something new on and that things are overlapping and we're keeping the audience engaged. And then go back to the other question that you guys asked about, you know, making sure we don't lose people just to make sure that we have that new content there. Uh, and I think we're also, another thing that we did to answer that, that question that you, that you asked earlier is uh, having the pre-roll and on linear, making sure we have the right spots and right ass running in front of a certain uh, new show that we have for the next show. So just being really, really targeted and precise about that to make sure we have a specific ad and, and maybe, you know, making it a specific tone or style to get it in front of someone who's, who's watching already in on a different star show to show them what we have coming down the line. So, you know, we buy them an extra month, we buy an extra month or two where they're not going to cancel the subscription because they, they're in for that next show because they're going to tune in and watch Hightown. And then after Hightown, we'll promise that this other show is going to be on coming in July, you know, just to, just to keep them on the app and keep them engaged. Well, Hey man, I had a great time. Me too. It, 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 it was a little more fun in person in LA. <laughs> I know. When are you coming back out? Whenever, whenever you can, right? Dude, you're my LA broski, man. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to spend some time with you in that new fat pad you got. Yeah, dude. We can hang out on the patio. <laughs> hey, producer gang, any more questions? I don't, I don't have any. Okay, good. Hi, I'm Nick Warner. That was my Platinum Hour. <laughs>